Good morning. Can you tell us a little bit about seed libraries in general? So essentially seed libraries work sort of like a regular library where you check them out, you can grow them out, and then the idea is that you collect the seed and return them back into the library. So they're a wonderful concept for bringing seed back into the community and making them accessible to people. It's, a, it's community participation and it's free access for everyone. So anybody can take out seeds, anybody can try planting seeds. It sort of creates this culture of sharing. And so you've been working over the past several months to get this seed library implemented here at the Public Library in Keene, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And so I think it could be useful if we talk a little bit about the specifics on how this library here works. So when you first walk to the C Library, you see the three different steps. So first you sign up, you choose your seed, and then you return your seed if you want. So the first step, um, we have this bright red box so that it's um, obvious what it is, where the seed memberships go. So you sign out, um, and then you come over here, and you select which seeds you want. Take this checkout seed, uh, sheet and you just put which seeds you, you took. Um, and then when you come and return your seeds we have a little information on returning seed. Um, we have little envelopes that people can return seeds if they want. So essentially we have a membership form that people can sign up for. It's completely free. Um, and we ask information just to get a sense of if they want to um, more information about seed programs or workshops or anything. Um, and then they can take whatever seed packets they want and they just check them out on another form and they can take them home and if they want to return the seeds they can, but it's not a requirement. And is that the same for all seed libraries? Each library has their own system for checking out seeds and some are just signing out which seed they, you take and you don't even need a membership card. Some it's a paid system. So there's different methods and that, that you can sort of work out in your community of which, which uh, method you want to use. Are there any common elements that you would say are really important? For, for all seed libraries to have? Each seed library will look really different in different communities and it is supposed to, that's sort of the beauty of seed libraries is they can have, they can take on the different sort of personalities. Um, but the major four elements that are important in thinking about for a seed library is the um, sort of the exhibit design, the main layout of the seed library, um, the organizational system, so how the seeds are um, organized by variety and how you want to develop your sort of checkout system and return system and your educational materials associated with that program, this sort of seed saving or pamphlets, anything associated with that and then you and then sort of the budget like how you're going to fund each of those pieces. And so for the exhibit design piece here in Keene, mm -hmm. how did your process work? Um, there's a lot of information about seed saving and the importance for the actual card itself is you're talking to the general public. So you want to really whittle that down into a very, very simplified version. So um, I think the rule is sort of you want to keep it at a fifth grade level, reading level. So keep it very simple and use sort of symbols and use um, very simple language so that more of your audience can participate and understand what you're, what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other pieces in our library that you would fit into that sort of organizational bucket? The organization of the seeds themselves. So you want it to be accessible to your users and you also want it to be in a system that people can sort of understand. So different libraries do different organizational systems and how they um, organize their seeds. For an example, our library, we, um, we have two varieties. We have vegetables and herbs and we alphabetize them by common name. Mm. 
So some other libraries organize it based on seed saving ability, so easy, medium, hard. Some seed libraries organize them by Latin name or um, family. But all of them are okay to Exactly, do. exactly. And even if you try one organization method and it doesn't seem to work, you can always revise and do a different Great. system. I like that flexibility. And so the third thing you said that was important for all seed libraries to consider was educational materials. Mm -hmm. So is the seed library in Keene doing anything specific around educational materials or educational outreach? Yeah, so there's several sort of components of the educational piece. Um, so we have a pamphlet which just generally explains why Seed Save. You want to explain to people why it's important to actually bring the seeds back and why diversity in agriculture is important. You also want to give them an understanding of how to save seeds. So we created a pamphlet that's sort of the basic information. Um, we also created a workshop series, one particular on how to save seeds. Um, but again, coming back to that piece of collaboration, uh, so working with the um, Manadnock Growers together, we, that was sort of part of a bigger urban agriculture um, workshop series, so it really tied well into the understanding of agriculture in general, and that really fits into seed saving because, you know, you can't save seeds if you don't know how to garden. Are there particular resources or particular types of resources that you would recommend? So for an example, Seed Savers Exchange has wonderful resources on everything from how to save seed, how to organize and, and put together a seed swap or certain seed events. Richmond Grows was sort of one of the first founding seed libraries, so they've, they have a bunch of educational resources really geared towards starting a seed library. So how are you soliciting feedback mm. from the community? Evaluation is really important in, well, any project you do, but especially um, in making sure that your seed library is doing what it's meant to be doing. And so if you want to keep track of, you know, how many members of your community are taking out seed, um, that's sort of part of that membership card is so that we can keep track of everybody who is um, taking seed out which particular seeds are important or are people interested in, um, making sure you're keeping track of everybody that attends your workshops, um, and sort of getting other information demographics is important, sort of the age groups, and so you can sort of tailor some of your programs to, to um, their interests around seed saving as well. And then does the community have a way to give input on types of seed they'd like to see at the library or, mm -hmm. or anything like that? Yeah, so we also have a comment box which allows for that kind of feedback of, you know, is this the right kind of seed that you want or is there anything we're missing from the program? So I imagine all of this costs money. It does, We should yeah. probably talk about budget. The beauty about seed libraries is they're pretty inexpensive to start. But in general you might say that Categories that could require a budget line item might include the seed itself, mm -hmm. the, for lack of a better word, the infrastructure of the display, mm -hmm. and then any signage mm -hmm. and promotional educational materials, um, and possibly money to pay people. Are some seed libraries done with volunteers? Yeah, yeah, a lot of seed libraries are done with um, volunteers or library staff who are able to be there more frequently and sort of um, keep up with replenishing the seeds. Just walk us through the budget. Um, what did this cost? So it was sort of in the ballpark of about $1,200. Um, and the biggest pieces were the seeds, of course, and the seed rack. So we got a 48 variety pack from High Mowing Seeds that incorporated the seed rack, and that was about $660. Um, and of course, the donations had some fees associated with it, um, and we had additional sort of printing, and we got a 
a lockbox for the memberships just so that nobody could take any information from there. Um, we have a binder of educational resources and sort of a little bit of an educational display there. Um, the two pieces that we don't that aren't sort of on this line budget are the actual card itself and the banner because again it's a partnership so um, those were part of their contribution. So just to reiterate, mm -hmm. if there's a community who's considering starting a seed library, mm -hmm. you said they probably need to consider four things. Mm -hmm. The design of the exhibit itself, mm -hmm. the ways in which the seed library systems are organized, mm -hmm. the educational materials, mm -hmm. and the budget. Exactly, yeah. Again, there's just pieces in between too, so having a really great team, so either volunteers or a collaboration, and evaluate, weaving evaluation into the whole process. You know, it's, it, it all starts with the seeds. Without, without a um, sustainable seed system, we don't have a sustainable food system. And we can't ensure our food security without preserving our seeds. Seeds are, are amazing in each one. They're, they're just these magic little beautiful things that exist and they're all alive. The more we can protect that and um, sort of protect it by using the seed, that's sort of the purpose of seed libraries.